This conference will now be recorded. Yep. So, Chandu, uh, can I start with you? Yeah, I have. Uh, okay, my name is Chandu. I've been um, in the IT world for the last 18 years, um, and I'm in Canada right now. Um, right now, I work on Pega and all those other technologies, but I like AI and ML field. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to join was uh, Asha suggested you and um, I really respect uh, what he does, so I wanted to see what it is, the content and all those things, but based on what you told already, I feel uh, really good about it. So let's see how we carry on. Sure, Chandra, good to hear. Right. So it means, uh, can I assume saying that you wanted to step into the world of AML after yes. this course, right? I, I want to understand a little more. It's not like I am not looking for a job immediately in this one because I it's more of, I uh, like the field. That's the reason I want to learn in a structured yep. way. That's the reason I'm here. Sure, Chandra. Okay, thanks for the introduction. Geetika? Hello, uh, my name is Geetika. I've been working for the last five years in the US. I work as a health IT uh, QA analyst, and I'm looking to make a transition into data science, so that's basically why I'm joining this program. I'm very interested. I think it's a very hot field to be in. And so I just want to get a lot of uh, community and a network going so I could get started to work. Yeah, sure, Geetika. So this particular demonstration will give you a better perspective about why you have uh, taken a very good decision of joining the analytics world. And you'll get a lot more uh, direction saying that how should you traverse the path uh, so that you'll be traveling in the true north direction to become a data scientist. Okay, Geetika. Okay, thank you, that's perfect. Yeah. Uh, moving to the next, Dan Bilur. Okay. Sorry if I pronounced this correctly or not. Okay. No, you're, you're, you're right there. Yeah. Uh, so my name is Dan Bilur Khan, and um, I uh, did my graduation from UCLA, University of California, Los Angeles, uh, five years ago. So I'm in the IT world for the last four years. I work as a PEGA developer for uh, U US Department of Justice and uh, i've been working there for the last uh, nine months and um, i saw um, a lot of data scientists there you know working around and i actually met a couple of them and they pretty much convinced me that it's is the next step to go you know if i want to go anywhere so i wanted to learn more about uh, data science and uh, how it is handled and uh, yep uh, i majored in basically as an electrical engineer mm -hmm. so and uh, very less knowledge of programming so i only learned pega and okay. i've been doing pega for the last four years and um, other than pega the only other language i know is probably c that's what i took in my class yeah um, yeah good to hear that uh Tanbino. uh okay then we'll get started right? because it's always good to know about our prior backgrounds so that mm -hmm. when I'm trying to take any demonstration i will try to cater to your needs so at least so i see like everyone is a working professional Right, having the ranging from four years all the way to 18 years of expertise, right? So yeah, we'll try to adjust to so that it will cater to your needs. Thank you. Okay, now till now, right? So if you have, if you have understood this IT ecosystem or IT ES related jobs, most of the times, uh, if you remember, you are either associated with respect to your programming language, a tool or a framework, isn't it? Right, even you talk about a Pega also, it's kind of a framework which has been built. Right exactly. or else if someone is working in .NET or maybe a Java, right? Or some of the other pro right? So again, they're associated with a programming language, right? Or else somewhere between some of the tools, right? A Tableau or a ClickView or a uh, Informatica, right? Or a issue. So there are a lot of other tools and frameworks that are available. Most of our IT related jobs are associated among these three, right? Either with respect to uh, uh, when I say technology roles, not the BS and QS, I'm just trying to talk about. In general, right? They are associated with a programming language, a tool, or a framework. But now, what you're going to see or witness is a subject which is creating a role, right? So the reason, whatever the preset uh, mind that we have, thinking that first I need to learn R language, Python language, etc., we have to get rid of that because data science is a subject first, and you cannot implement a subject on a piece of paper. Definitely, you need some programming frameworks to get implement those concepts. So the reason. You always have to think data science as a subject, but not as any other programming language. So the reason the way that you need to learn is also has to differ. Agree? 
So if you're learning a framework, you need to get to know what are the functionalities, what are the features, how do you do this, etc. Right? And if you're learning a programming language, the first and foremost thing is to learn the syntax. What are the data types? What are the conditional handling? Right? How do you write those functions, etc. But when you're learning a subject, right, you have to have your high school mindset, right? Right from your sixth grade, eighth grade, tenth grade. How did you learn a subject? Right? Very structuredly in a very uh, proper uh, iterative manner. So similarly, since if you wanted to become a data scientist, you need to have a lot of patience, and there needs to be a proper structure in place to have a plan in place and implement as part of the plan. Right. So the reason I'm trying to apply the same concepts as part of your demo session also. Right. Before I say what are the good opportunities that you have in data scientist, what are the good skill set that makes you a good data scientist and what is the course content and how Danush and uh, Harsha technologies can add a difference to this right before we know to them right first we need to understand what is data science because everyone is becoming a guru on the digital platforms right if you have a good English you have very good communication skills now everyone is creating creating a YouTube channel everyone is trying to write a blog articles and etc who are trying to provide a very different perspective of what is going to happen in the real time Right, so we need to demystify, relearn again what is data science first, right? Because there is a lot of confusion around what is data science, right? A person who is working in engineering field, data engineering field, claims themselves to be working on data science projects, right? A person who is working on BI related tools, Tableau, ClickView, Cognos, SAP Bureau reports, etc., claims themselves to be working on a data science project. A person who is trying to present the data in a very meaningful way, who traditionally called as a data analyst claim themselves as data scientists right there's a lot of confusion and myths going around what is data science so the reason the initial half session of today's demo would be concentrating about the basic w's and h because i always believe before you wanted to learn something any concept or a technique first one needs to be very clear about the fundamental w's and h right what it is Right? Why data science has become so famous only now? Right? Because only you, have, you might be hearing about AML only for the last two to three years. Right? Or prior to that, it was like one in ten articles. Now, if you go to any social media platform or any blog or any news articles, right? Six out of ten articles is only talking about analytics, nothing else. Have you seen this trend, friends? Yeah. Yeah, but data is not new to the world, isn't it? Your yeah. AI, right? The word called AI was termed in 1956. It is not even new, right? It's like a 70 year old term that uh, everyone has been started using artificial intelligence. But why there is a sudden search for data science only now? And where can you apply? Again, there is a lot of myths saying that data science can be only applied to a large, vast data sets only, so that only a top MNCs can afford data science. But do you know that 60% of the startups across the globe have a dependency on data science skill set? All the startups that have uh, registered themselves from 2018 for the last three years, if you have gone through 60% of the all the startups that you have created across all the globes have dependency on the AML skill set. Okay, so the reason we need to understand what kind of an applications that you can develop once you have this data science webinaries as part of your toolkit. Okay, and why business are investing so heavily on business because you know uh, as part of our latest latest batch because i always try to take some of those real world examples because but most of them are from us and uh, canada uh, so the last batch i don't have any from uh, us and canada but prior to two batches right there was a person called santosh right so he was working on a java development and after pursuing our course right so it was like in three and up to four months of course depending upon how the pace of the students are going to be and after this he was able to uh, Participate in a lot of hackathon, etc., and was able to crack one of those JP Morgan uh, hackathon on the data science skill set, and he got a job of 180k immediately. He was a fresher who has done his MSc, and he was just into Java domain, but he was able to get certified as a data scientist from us, and he was able to get placed too. And some of the other examples, as part of the very latest batch, is Tarun Reddy. So he was our earlier batch who got passed out in the month of April. Okay, so as part of him, right? So he got placed in Goldman Sachs in Bengaluru with 11 times 11x of his current package. Believe me, friends, he was working as a QA analyst, right, in a service based organization. Now, after uh, enrolling for our program, right, he was extremely passionate about data science. I would definitely believe that we were able to provide a right direction to his passion, and he was able to get a huge amount of uh, 
recognition as part of Goldman Sachs uh, interviews and technical panel discussions. Right, so that's what happens. So always follow your passion, and if your passion lies in data science, and there is no turn back. Okay, and and also we are going to understand like why business are investing heavily, why data science are one of those highly paid jobs, right? And once we are being clear about this basic W's and H, we're going to talk about what are the skill set required and what makes so special uh, in this particular ecosystem, how we are trying to train our students in a, on a real-time project and etc. And towards the end, we're going to talk about the course content also. Okay, are you clear? So most of your questions, concerns, issues would be addressed in one of those sections. If you still think that it is not being addressed, you can always open your microphone, ask your question. Is everyone clear on this? Yeah, yeah, Danish. Okay. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, we have like a new journey, so let's have some introduction from Anita. Hey, Anita. We're just getting started. You have not missed much. Yeah. yeah. Can you introduce yourself to the team, please? Your name, your current skill set, expertise. Yeah, Danish. I'm Anita. I am very much interested in doing data science. Currently, I'm working in Palaxon International as a trainee or completed okay. the MBA. Sure, Anita. So this demo session is going to talk about uh, the basic W and H of data science, and towards the end, what is this particular program? How to what uh, length it is? What are the concepts that would be covered? And how are we going to help you on working on some of those real world projects and also conducting an POC by yourself in your current organization? So that's how this program structure would be paid off, and we'll get started, friends. Right. So the right motivation before we start a journey any journey right so you need to have a right motivation and what could be a better motivation rather than this statement from harvard business review because data science is called as the sexiest job of the 21st century wow right it's the hottest job that we are going to learn but can someone think through right why it is called as the hottest job always understand the word called job it means from an employee perspective not from the employer perspective isn't it anyone Pays a lot. Yeah, and um, I feel because it it gives insights on the things that you wouldn't have been able to think in a uh, traditional ways. That's the reason, like everybody is looking for that edge. Definitely right, because most of the times our business processes or our solutions are reactive in nature. They were never proactive in nature. They are not intelligent enough to provide some insights so the reason most of the people even a person who is doing under graduation course right they are thinking about data science and aml because it's very interesting fascinating right so you are going to talk about something for in the future you are trying to predict something before it happens so definitely it, is, it has got most of the people's interest because as i said most of your it related jobs are regular mundane and monotonous after a certain period of time isn't it friends you will enjoy yeah. for first year second year slowly coming to the third year it will get a routine task right until unless a very good project comes in it is like a regular maintenance thing that you're going to do right you don't use your all capabilities and you don't get a challenging environment in every project right but data science is the only subject related role which exists in the world which throws challenges on every day even after five years plus of expertise handling tens of projects across multiple organizations and as part of my startup too even today if i work on a new problem statement right there will be some learning always right but there would be some always challenges i will get an accuracy of 92.5 and to move it from 92.5 to 93 just a half percent increase in accuracy it might take a week's time for me so that's how complex when you're trying to deal with the data getting 80 85 is very straightforward there are a lot of frameworks which can help you but after a certain extent if you wanted to increase a one percent increase accuracy in your model it might take weeks together sometimes okay so that's how this particular field is very interesting very fascinating for all the people who have been regularly working on the roles which do not demand that so that is one of the uh, key point which has helped to get it a tag as hot but can you think about any other factors friends i want this to be interactive right um, it's not an theater style yeah, yeah, now it's just uh, one is constant learning and another one is like it's all about like adapting to the new 
things that are there, right? Very good. So these are some of those other factors, right, uh, on the soft skills. But I'm not getting an honest answer because it's one of the hardest job to see how good we are about our passion about the technology. One of the factors that plays a role is all about are we getting the right ROI for the effort that you are putting in, isn't it? Right. It might yeah, not be the only factor, but it would be one of the factors that would definitely consider. Yeah. Right, and also data science teams are called as apples of organizations. I don't know how many of you are aware of this uh, phrase, right? All data scientists in any organization are called apples of their organizations because they get a chance to work with CXX. They are going to get a chance to work with some of the business leaders directly. When I say business leaders, those are not your traditional BA analyst, but the actual yeah. owners of the business who are driving this. Right? Who will get a chance in an IT field to work with them very closely on a day-to-day -day basis? Right, because you're going to hear this problem statement from the directly CXX, right? Your CTOs, CIOs, they come with varied problem statements, and you will be part of those table topic discussions about how can we further improve the efficiency of a particular customer journey in an organization. So the reason, apart from the good paychecks, there would be constant learning, there would be constant challenges that you need to solve from time to time, right? And so the reason, even it would be a uh, burning late nights oil but it would always be a worth for the every effort that you're trying to put it on a project because all the solutions that you're going to deliver would be directly impacting the business value either in terms of dollars or either in terms of your cost efficiency productivity or efficacy right so these are the several factors which are actually playing a role which makes people crave for data science roles Okay, so then for the last five years, right from 2015 till year, data science is the top rated job across all the roles and uh, jobs that you have across the globe. And recently, right, I've been part of the startup uh, ecosystem too. So I get a lot of uh, survey reports. And recently in 2019 Q4, there was a survey published where they have interviewed 5,000 data scientists across the globe. And the job satisfaction levels for data scientists and what do you think on a scale of one to five? What do you think the average rating would be? Five. It's 4.8 friends. Five. So this yeah. is the highest rated job from the job satisfaction perspective, right? People work for money, but at the same time, they wanted to enjoy their jobs. And they have, okay. when they have surveyed on 5,000 global data scientists, 4.8 was the average. Think about how people are enjoying their jobs, mm -hmm. right? So these are some, several factors which are motivating people to step into the world of a role which is dominated by the subject rather than a programming framework or a language. Got a better idea? Got a good motivation yeah. for us to yeah, do that? Sounds good, man. Sounds good. Very man. good. Now let's try to understand. So I see like people are very interested or passionate about this. It is the four people that I have interacted with now here are very interested to step into the new world. Now to deliver any data science project. Right. What do you think is a very critical uh, crux to deliver? Whether it's in programming frameworks or it's like an analytical reasoning or any stats, machine learning. Or, what do you think? Which plays a greater or pivotal role to deliver a data science project successfully? Data points. Very good. Data points. Bingo. Bullseye. Friends, always remember. Historically, we have seen the data always as a string of some values to validate our logics, isn't it? Did we give the due respect for the data that it requires? No. No, because we always think like, okay, this is a table called employee table. So in employee table, there are 14 attributes. These 14 attributes are either string or numeric. If this is a string, what are the values? If it is numeric, what are the values? That's it. We never bothered why this particular table is created in the entire business process, right? In which particular, whether it's been created at the starting, towards the middle, or towards the servicing side, or towards the closure. So we, we are never bothered about the domain knowledge related to this particular data, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So from now, if you wanted to become a data scientist, the journey starts with understanding of the data and understanding of the domain with respect to the problem statement that you're working on. So this, I say this is a, in, we are living in industrialization 4.0 and data is the new fuel. There is no other alternate to this. If you have a very good data set, even a small simple algorithm will fetch you far more insights rather than if you have a half-baked information, right? Where business and SMEs are not helping you to get the right data, 
they said okay this is what i have i said like we asked for 10 years data they said oh, it's hard to get 10 years data because it's an archival tables so leave with five years data so if this is such kind of a mentality where they are not providing all the information or all the data even if you are using the most complex more latest and more advanced algorithm your insights would be not matched to that of your simpler model which is working on the full potential on the data are you getting the sense of it it means yeah, yeah. it all starts with the understanding and identifying the right data to solve a particular problem statement okay so this particular digital era we call data is the new oil and data science is an electricity to extract the insights from the data right yes yeah. agree with the analogy anita it ka yes sir okay it means if you wanted to become a data scientist you have to reset your mind saying that my love my life the, the success of a project is entirely depend on the data right? but people of what happens the moment they learn lot of different algorithms techniques right they are more interested in jumping on to apply them without spending a quality time in understanding the data so that's where most of the people are failing fast why because they wanted to fast fit an algorithm see the accuracies no friends if you wanted to become a data science said one of the first one is patience because you have to listen to the data the moment you have to listen to the data you have to torture the data a little now, without getting the torturing of the data you will not get the required insights so the reason the initial few weeks of a data scientist is just goes through understanding the problem statement in a greater detail understanding the domain related to the problem statement and fitting the domain knowledge to the data that has in hand okay so the initial 2 to 3 weeks of the time just goes in just exploring data understanding the domain understanding the problem statement in a greater detail nothing more than that okay yeah okay now now let's stick to the agenda right we have talked about a lot of motivation points and some of those core things that you need to learn now let's fall back to our agenda the first w what is data science now can someone have any definition anita can you hear from you pretty silent today what do you think what is data science deals about so don't worry about the correctness of the answer i always look about your thought process how your thoughts are getting generated when i ask a question nothing more than that anita don't worry just say like what is data science what do you think data science deals with something like a, it's a tool which is necessary to extract the data from the raw data okay so you are saying trying to talk about if i'm able to understand correctly you are saying that it is a tool or a mechanism which is trying to extract information or knowledge from the data agree the somewhere yes. okay very good good try tanbinur yeah good can we hear from you too uh i'm um, i think it's more like a uh, getting information about an entity and uh, playing with the data and mm -hmm. uh, get the best desire of i mean how to utilize the data and get the best out of it okay good good try how about others would like to try Geetika, Chandra. It's. Uh, <clears throat> I feel data science is basically understanding the data and uh, like look at the data in a way where we can solve the problems or, or anticipate the problems and solve them. That's that's what I feel data oh, science is. A good angle, right? Data-driven solutioning. I always call it as right because most of the times when we think about solutions, we think we need to write the logic by ourselves. Why could why don't you generate those insights or the knowledge, right, or those uh, kind of a business tools from the data itself? So we generally call most of the data science problems as data-driven solutions. The solution is dependent on the data. Okay, good thing. Geetika, would you like to try once? Because we um, got different angles, but let's see. I would say like using a framework uh, to uh, and. Uh soft like using the framework to design the solution or mm -hmm. have the computer figure out the solution 
okay you are saying that computers will have the uh, no, uh, what you call capability to solve the problem itself but with the help mm -hmm. of something we call them as algorithms okay makes sense definitely all the definitions are valid uh, are answering a particular section of the data sense but now let's try to build a definition from the words itself okay so friends i have to mute you because i'm hearing a lot of echo sorry for that but whenever you have a question you can open your microphone that should not be a concern okay now let's try to form a definition from the words present in it so data science has two words data and science now can someone tell you what is data we have been living with data right what is data anything that you collect about anything is data. Wow, super <laughs> a very straightforward answer it's a raw fact it's an information about anything and everything but it has to be in a documented format we call it as a data very good and i believe that most of us here are science students because we are associated with the technology definitely i believe that we have been a science students as part of our high schools isn't it now can say tell me what does science deal with why do we call it as a science or what does science deal with any idea no okay let me tell you the so science will always right it's an art or field which is always dealing with four do you know what for it is always about exploration analysis the third one is experimentation and the fourth one is the knowledge so the ultimate objective of any science project is all about knowledge but how do you come up to the knowledge you have to analyze a lot you have to explore a lot you have to experiment a lot only when you have been doing this trick uh, with uh, religiously and uh, with the due diligence you will be landing upon the knowledge that you need agree friends a simple definition what is science agree yeah okay now let's try to form a definition what is data science in a layman terms what is data science your data science is a field which is dealing with exploration of data analysis of data experimentation on data with respect to different fields the fields could be mathematics statistics machine learning deep learning or nlp i'm not bothered i have to experiment a lot on the data using the different weaponry or using the different skill set that i have and finally extract the knowledge the knowledge from the data could be in terms of predictions it could be in terms of classification it could be in terms of forecasting it could be in terms of recommendation the knowledge could be in any form just a few of the examples that i talked about forecasting predictions classifications recommendation engines etc make sense let me tell the definition again what is data science data science is a field which is dealing with exploration on data analysis of data experimentation on data using the different fields math stats machine learning deep learning nlp etc and finally extract the knowledge the knowledge from the data could be in form of classification predictions forecasting or recommendations etc make sense a simple definition without relying on the wiki yeah right no but let's try to see a one liner definition there are tens of definitions about what is data science but these are my personal favorites which are trying to talk about the intent of this field in a one liner statements right the first flavor of this definition goes in extraction of knowledge from the data i am not bothered which whether i am trying to do a predictions forecasting or etc or am i using which particular science to extract the knowledge because the ultimate goal the ultimate objective of any data science project is to extraction of knowledge from the data and this knowledge has to be very generalizable it does not mean that if i try to extract the knowledge it should not solve the purpose for current day or current week only right but the moment i talked about a prefix word called generalizable it means it is a general pattern that is being exhibited by this particular data over a period of time got that point so that is the first flavor of definition is all about generalizable extraction of knowledge from the data and the second flavor of definition is more about predictive modeling the moment someone is trying to talk about data science projects most of the times they are trying to talk about predictive modeling why because business over the last few decades they have tried all the possible methods on the reactive approach when it's a reactive approach what happened where happened why happened so these are the reactive approaches they are not going to talk about what will happen in the future right so business are getting excited to know about that because now we are living in a competitive world every business organization wants to stay ahead of the others how can they achieve only when they will be able to predict what will happen in the future now they can take some corrective actions or preventive actions in the present 
agree so the reason most of the times the moment someone is trying to talk about data science projects they are always trying to talk about predictive modeling because all the regular reactive approaches are been tried and tested by the business right those are helpful but they are always trying to help you what has happened the incident has already happened now we are trying to do a postmortem saying that okay what happened why happened where happened now that is not going to solve the purpose now they were looking forward saying that what will happen based upon my historical patterns okay so this is the scam flavor of definition is always trying to talk about giving some actionable insights or predicting what is going to happen in the future and the third flavor of definition is all about converting the raw data into business value very simple if you have looked at most of the ai ml based startups you will always see this word data economization monetizing the data generating revenue from data data driven solutions why because all the business organizations have spent huge billions of dollars on storing the data isn't it friends when you talk to your data warehousing system still you will get to know how much pain that they take in storing the huge amount of petabytes of information right which is spread across multiple databases it could be sql oracle teradata it could be a big data lake or reservoir isn't it but are we really using all the data that we have in our organization for the productivity increase or for the efficiency increase friends are we using them any idea and in some cases right i mean like in some cases data. very good do you know that what is the percentage of the uh, data that we are using for that some cases any idea chandra any ballpark mark that you have in mind uh, i would say around 30 to 40% <laughs> you'll be surprised we are using only 5% of the data wow. can you believe that so as part of the latest gartner report because uh, i get lot of personalized gartner report as part of my startup activities too in the 2019 publication that they have published all the enterprises all the bigger enterprises right even after the big data boom and the analytics boom still they are not even able to touch 5% of their historical data warehousing data that's how we are lagging and we are, we know that data is the new fuel and data science is an electricity to extract knowledge from the data if the business implement them definitely they are going to see a lot to, a lot of value additions even after knowing so many things the business were not even able to cover 5% of their historical data till date as per of 2019 q4 so think how much lag that we are falling even after knowing that applying data science would be a killer for most of the organizations so this is the third flavor of definition is all about converting this raw data extracting the new features creating the new features processing this raw data into business value because business are spending billions of dollars in storing the information as part of your auditing or as part of your regulatory compliances right there are a lot of uh, auditing regulatory complaints that you have to keep a customer record for seven years 11 years based upon the type of product that you're selling and to certain extent we are generating some reports right for easy decision making about historical evidences but still we are not even able to touch five percent of your entire data warehousing data that is being sitting idly where you are paying huge billions of dollars to maintain it right so the reason data is the only field which is trying to awake the ideal data which was sleeping in those data warehousing systems for decades okay are you clear about can i say that are you clear now what is data science so you can come up with a new definition but as long as the intent is coming correctly are you clear can i get some acknowledgement from everyone sounds good man i got two votes how about the rest anita geetika are you clear you can acknowledge at least in the chat that helps me geetika anita appreciate your responses please yes anish i'm clear okay okay then okay now when someone is trying to talk about data science right there is a lot of confusion right as i said this is how the confusion might be people who are working in data mining area saying they are working on data science people who are working on big data technologies how do spark they're saying they're working as data scientist there's a lot of myths and uh, confusions around what are the true core skill set for a data scientist right we are going to demystify this in a couple of slides from now but let's leave with this confusion now now moving to the second w why now interesting right data existed decades back 
your statistics machine learning ai existed decades back but why there is a sudden surge in demand for data scientists only now when it's only now for the last three to four years that may be predominantly right i would say 2018 is when the actually boom for data scientists has started okay but why there is a sudden surge for data science only now now let's try to see the two reasons all the technological investment is sponsored by the business agree because only when business is able to generate good roi only then they will build more technology teams agree or not yeah so it means whatever happens on the technological world it is directly influenced by the business people so why business are investing more let's try to get to the root the root here is business why business are investing heavily in coming up new data science teams the simple concept is business will always be interested in roi or return on investment now as part of the latest report right again uh, because i'm uh, i get as i said a lot of reports from the gartner and as part of the gartner's 2019 report now they have claimed saying that any mnc or any large enterprises or even the startups who are investing significantly in data science teams their company revenues will automatically shoot up by 4% to 15% wow isn't it great friends all they have yeah. to do is spin up a new team with a prioritized book of work see because just spinning up 10 members does not solve the problem right you have to provide a good book of work for them a prioritized book of work where it can be having some tangible benefits okay so the moment this particular prioritization book of work has been agreed by the cxs right and if you have a very good significant investment backed by a data science team your company revenues will automatically shoot up by 4% to 15% wow and as part of this report what we have done is in our organization because uh, our organization is spread across tens of countries and we have seen like we have a global presence of nearly 120 data scientists when i say data scientist there is a true data scientist not the half big data scientist or where a person learned r and python and claimed them just as a data scientist okay where there is a true data scientist who have a very good exposure and expertise in this field and we have just evaluated what is the dollar amount that we are able to save for our organization it came to be outstanding 8.5% as part of your technological expenditure we are a team of 120 people only and we are able to contribute 8.5% of your technological spends or saves as part of 2019 staggering right our technological headcount was 1 150000 employees 150k and there is a small group of 120 people on the other side and we played the 8.5% role isn't it fascinating friends nice so so the reason business are very very interested in spinning up the data science teams it's simple mathematics i am investing more because i am getting more so there is a business are very very interested so 2016 and 17 were like in poc stages most of the data science projects are pocs they build a small project project to the business to win their confidence right so they were very excited and 2018 and 19 are the remarkable years in data science industry why all the pocs or initial pilots which were able to uh, which were developed to make business interested in this field they have started investing them and they slowly got productionized and after production is they started seeing the benefits by themselves in real time right so this is how business have got a trust on the data science model saying that yes this can replace humans in certain areas by replacing the humans or by increasing the productivity customer experiences you will be able to save lot of dollars for your business activities so that is the first primary reason simple roi and the second important business reason why data has become so famous is the single point of contact now historically before data science come into the existence in 2015 this particular word was coined somewhere around 2014 second half to 2015 first half it took one year of time for people to gel with this particular new term called data science prior to this if business have any uh, solutions that they need from the data right there used to be n number of teams let me name you a few of them there used to be a data analyst team data mining team statisticians team or else they used to have a machine learning engineers so depending upon the complexity of the problem statement depending upon objective of the problem statement depending upon the structure of the data right they have to run from one pillar to other pillar so if it is just presenting the data they used to go to a data analyst they do manually use some frameworks 
a matlab or excel sheets or something they try to come up with a good presentable data and if their objective is to identify the patterns no data analyst does not know pattern recognition and etc then they have to go to data mining team now data miners use your statistical knowledge to certain extent some logics and analytical processing on the data and they try to come up with segmenting of the data profiling of the data identifying the patterns on the data now if the business need is building a mathematical relationship on the data then they used to go to a statisticians and if the data is very unstructured say the data is in the form of text data word documents pdfs or maybe logs information right then they used to go to a machine learning engineer who is a much more enhanced version of your statistician who has got much more weaponry as part of his toolkit he'll be able to solve such kind of problems pretty easily now do you see this is the right way of for the business to run from one team to another team no no right because business are not tech savvy they are more focused about the problem statement and if i solve this what kind of benefits that they are going to get it they are not interested in technological compliance right why should i worried about which particular skill set or which particular technology should be used as long as you are serving the purpose of the problem statement i am good with it so that's where this new term called data science has been come into the existence now from now right in all the organizations now data science team are directly working with business teams so there is a data science teams are called as techno functional roles what do you mean by techno functional either people work on the functional side or people work on the technological side agree yeah. so there is a now they have identified a new team called as techno functional role what does it mean being a data scientist you will work very closely with respect to functional areas all the business people okay at the same time you are dependent on your technology to provide the solutions it means you are treated as a business person because you get access to all the production entities all production entities because in most of the organizations if you see technology people should not see the production data until unless it's an a p1 incident or something there is a proper mechanism if you are working for an mnc there is a proper protocol any development team should not get access to the production data as simple as it is but being a data scientist your work is on production data right your work is with respect to actual business but you are using a technology to solve that so there is an data science team has been created as a techno functional role who will directly work with the business in understanding their problem statements in providing a design and approach and building them and finally delivering them okay so the reason business instead of running from pillar to pillar now they are trying to reach out to the data science team with all their problem statements this is how the book of work or the prioritization of the work will happen at the start of the year okay so what is business trying to get they are getting a single point of contact for all their problem statements cool okay it is a ease of use the flexibility this team is trying to bring to the business organizations are you clear on this the business reasons why data yeah. science has become so famous is because of roi and because of single point of contact for business organizations simple mm -hmm. okay and coming to the technical reasons you might be surprised how technical reasons will play a role for data science boom the first one is cheap storage now if you have uh, gone back 10 years right our smartphones used to have a 2 gb memory card right our laptops used to come up with a 256 gb as in hard disk uh, as a standard configuration and 10 years uh, forward now our smartphones are sporting a 256 gb memory card but what am i why am i saying this on a personal friend we are storing huge amount of data isn't it yeah. now think about organizations think about enterprises think about multinational companies how much data they might be storing right it may it has increased exponentially agree the one of the factor is the cheap storage right i still remember right uh, because i started my journey as an legacy developer in ibm pune right that's how i started my journey in ibm pune in the year 2007 okay so when i started right whenever we wanted to send the feed to data warehouse systems there used to be a brd discussion whether this table should be dumped into data warehouse system or not if it has to be dumped then what are the column that needs to be stored because there is a cost associated for storing and people are very interested to optimize their cost but now there is no longer any discussions the moment some data is created as part of any business process the data has been stored or archived why because the cost per gb has drastically reduced year on year agree friends have you seen this oh yeah 
right so that it means it is giving the organizations an extra bandwidth to store all the information without having discussion whether it's useful or not hey it's a data created as part of the business process let's store it let's not debate which particular column should be saved or not right they're dumping each and every possible information that they have created as part of any customer journey or business process the one of the reason is cheap storage the because of cheap storage more data is stored and to refer to the first slide data is the new fuel what does it mean as the data grows the opportunities grows as the opportunities grows the roles related to mine them will go or down will go up or down go up. simple it's a simple correlation data is growing opportunities or projects are growing as these are growing definitely the respective professionals who has to mine the data has to has to go up right so this is how the more data is actually empowering the data science teams to come up with better solutions okay and coming to the second one abundant data it means from invention of your computers to till 2015 and 16 we have created some x amount of data and in just last 3 years right we have created equal amount of data it's not only the data is getting increased but the complexity associated with data is also changing agree because when someone is trying to talk about data 5 years back they used to always talk about rdbms mysql ms sql oracle data etc is it friends now can you say that the data is only structured data now no. geetika can you tell me some of the forms of the data geetika appreciate you are not available for a while now are you there geetika i'll be talking from call or queue number okay anyone else can someone tell me what are the different other structures of the data one is structured data which is called rdbms row and columnar format what else Longer. what else very good it's called you know sql what does it mean it means the data can be unstructured sometimes now talk about your word documents talk about your logs information right logs information is generally called as semi structured data but it means historically we have been habituated to use row and columnar format only but now we are exposed to semi structured data just like your xmls htmls json formats right or maybe the logs data from dynatrace plunks there are a lot of semi structured data that is getting generated and also we have been exposed to unstructured data the free form text from your social media from your iot devices the web data the images data the videos data it means the complexity associated with data is also getting changed drastically it means all your historical roles all your historical techniques which are working on this kind of a data is no longer valid agree yeah. they needs to be upgraded or they needs to be changed to suit to the new data that we are being getting generated agree so this is the second reason why it has created a need to have a new role because the complexity associated with data is also getting changed drastically okay and coming to the third one is computation power open source languages why because in the last decade right saas software have you ever heard about this sas yeah analytics uh, statistics yes very good it's a statistical software why because if someone wants to step into the world of statistics saas used to enjoy a monopoly in the market this is to be the go to field a go to tool for someone who wants to do some statistical processing very easily so but is a loss on licensed project right each license will cost you some thousands of dollars can everyone afford this friends on a personal friend can we just to explore just to learn no definitely not so the reason these open source languages has drastically changed the ecosystem of your ai ml why because of our language because of python language even an undergraduate are trying to solve some of those very critical problem statements pretty easily at comfort of his home because of open source languages i would separately say that the reason that you are going to see so many articles the so many uh, blogs or solutions in github repositories or in kaggle right this has become possible just because of open source languages because everyone is able to get in hand on the analytics very easily prior to this they, they have to be dependent on a some licensed products for their exploration for their learning also 
now because of this open source languages and and again because of increased in computation power right so i still remember in 2000 uh 15 and 16 when i was trying to build for my first image classification right on a 10000 images do you know that how much time it would take it used to take 24 to 32 hours on a medium range data set just to train my model now because of this gpus now i can be able to train even a 1 million uh images maybe within a, a couple of hours it means increase in the computation power has created new techniques new architectures right for better exploration of some of those complex problem statements and because of availability of your open source languages because of excellent community support if someone has created an algorithm right they are immediately making this available for the rest of the world to leverage them they're not just keeping close to themselves whatever the algorithm whatever the technique someone has created it is coming immediately as a package in your r language or as a library in your python to the worst case someone is right to trying to understand the logic and try to create a source code in github repositories so this is how because of the n number of reasons what you're witnessing today of the data science boom is because of this business and technical reasons are you clear now little elaborate but that's how it is you need to understand the evolution so that you know what are the factors which has played or uh, a critical role in what you're trying to witness today can i get some acknowledgement are we clear chandra geetika yes, yes. sounds good yes, yeah. sounds good anita clear able yes. to follow yes very good now coming to the applications right so i always a person who tries to teach theory but it at the same time, we need to see some practical implementation, isn't it? Now, shall we do some real-time analytics? Friends, sure. enough of theory, right? For the last 45 minutes, I've been teaching too much or preaching too much. Now, let's try to see some practical implementation. Let me start my screen share uh, on a new thing. Mm. Let me know once you're able to view a different screen. Friends, you see this dashboard now? Yeah, we can. Yes. Mm, just sorry for that. Just give me a second. Okay, it might take a little time. I am just trying to spin up a real-time uh, project. Okay. Uh, how okay. applying our data science skills might solve one of those interesting problem statement. Before going that, right? So it will take a couple of minutes of time. Let's try to discuss some of the other use cases here. The use cases here are Amazon, Netflix, LinkedIn. Can someone tell me what is the common among all that you can think through? Recommendation. Very good. It's a recommendation engine. So let me tell you a very interesting use case on Amazon. So when Amazon was initially started their sales as an online portal to sell some books, right? They never used to have a recommendation engine, right? But soon they understood saying that until unless you make your customers experience the journey, and until unless you make your customers loyal, you are not going to win the race. Right? And as part of their business operations, where they are trying to into a lot of products, they understood the need of an analytical experience that is called a recommendation engine. Right? So whenever you're trying to purchase a product, right, you always see this kind of recommendations, isn't it? Frequently yeah. brought together, customers who bought this item, they have also bought this. Right? You call this in uh, data science terminology simply as recommendation engine. Right? And after implementation of this recommendation engine, the Amazon revenues shot up by 30%. And you know that there were only four people who worked on this initial recommendation engine. And immediately in the subsequent quarters, their company revenue shot up by 30%. But can someone tell me why? How? Sales. More Sales. Purchases. Simple, right? It is like a more purchases. Very good. When you're trying to show one particular product that they're searching for, when you're trying to recommend saying that, hey, a person who is also buying this, they also buy this. It means yeah. you're trying to expose more number of products to for their view. If you just try to provide a keyword based search match, they will, it will try to give only one product. But if you're trying to select based upon the historical purchasing behavior, if you try to bundle the products together correctly, right? Definitely it will catch the attention of the customer and they're going to buy more products. It is not only buying more number of products in a single transaction, but that particular person down the line will become a loyal customer because he is enjoying a good customer experience. Take it a simple example. I'm buying a smartphone, a new smartphone, right? 
and i'm also giving a good recommendation saying that what should be the back cover what should be the uh, scratch pad maybe or maybe some of those accessories otg cable or maybe a usb cable or maybe a good headset if i try to recommend it very correctly would it make your experience good or bad good very good right it means your customer experience is going up at the same time he is buying more number of products eventually he is becoming loyal to yourself right the moment the engagement between a customer and a business is growing more then there is more revenue thus more profits would be generated isn't it yeah right so there is an all the fang companies we always call this fang companies right what are the fang companies facebook and your okay. netflix amazon. amazon right google, google. why they are leaders because they were able to catch the pulse of the customers very quickly and they were great visionaries right when machine learning was not even discussed in most of the other organizations because i work for uh, some of the reputed organizations united health group uh, jp morgan wells fargo right when people not even thinking about analytics these fellows has already implemented and make their products based upon your ai ml and they are the leaders actually in this particular technological implementations got that point so the reason don't always think that just building a good solution will try to crack because they have to build a vision a innovative layer over and above their products which has helped them in getting more business okay now let's try to see some practical implementation so i need a volunteer here um, let me pick tanbinur uh, can yes, you converse sir. with me for a while okay yes. now say as an example you are an AT and t customer okay you have subscribed for one of the package for say 100 dollars some x x y g package the money mm -hmm. got debited but the particular package is not activated what do you do immediately i call the customer service very good you call the customer service and you raise a complaint and if it is very simple they try to fix it on the go or else they will give you a standard sla maybe 24 hours or 48 hours depending upon how complex it is agree so this mm -hmm. entire conversation is it a public conversation or a private conversation uh it's a private yes it's a private between you and the respective service provider but yeah. have you seen a new trend where yeah. people are making keeping it only private or public mm, public uh, yes. i was call right. if we have a call and it is a private session mm -hmm. but uh, i'm i mean to say that are people are just going to the call centers only or they are trying to vent no. their anger on any of the public forums too uh yes uh, yes they are actually posting reviews and all this stuff yeah yes now do you know that how organizations are handling this any idea friends i don't know most of you are not aware of this i'm pretty sure I'm yeah. do you know that yeah, how yeah. organizations are handling this yeah there are teams that actually work on uh, very good so similar to your call centers and call center representatives now they have created a new department or new vertical called as contact centers and we call the agents working over this contact center representatives similar mm -hmm. to your call centers they are not replacing call centers they are trying to build a new verticals who are specialized in handling the social media platforms they are called mm -hmm. as contact centers and contact center representatives not many know that every organizations have them either they have outsourced or as they are trying to build a new teams as part of their own verticals mm -hmm. but every organization has a contact centers representatives now what do they do their duty is to monitor them because every organization has a social media presence their official twitter pages official facebook pages official insta pages agree yeah. Yeah. right now how are they handling because if it is a small organization if they have like 1000 or 10000 customers it's very easy but mm -hmm. think about a wells fargo bank or jp morgan bank do you know how many customers they would have millions millions of customers now if something goes wrong and if you how many tweets that you might get in an hour's time maybe it will be running into thousands now is it possible for a manual person to review them and try to tag them do you think it's possible it's possible but it's going to take a huge amount of time isn't it right right now as part of our organization let me tell you a real world scenario it's not a fake scenario it's a real world scenario where in the year of 2016-17 we have been using a third party product called as sprinkler because the moment there is a problem statement people build a product right the sprinkler is such kind of a product which is trying to do this most of the activities in a very easy to use manner but they charge the moment you're saying third party license product they charge per license and we need 300 licenses and the cost itself is going up to 1 million dollars plus Right, but what we have thought through is why should we depend on a, some some of the simplest 
analytical solution why should we depend on a third party product why don't we build in house so that's where we have developed a simple product which is called as customer feedback analysis so the moment the feedback is provided on the social media platforms or anywhere in the email or anything but i just wanted to show you some real time analytics because historical people show you some excel sheet data where you upload it you do a lot of processing now what i'm going to show you is the real time analytics okay now say as an example in one hour you got 1000 tweets then used to be a multiple structures in a contact centers the level one agents will try to manually review the content they try to tag them whether it should this go to further processing or a simple acknowledgement will solve the purpose and depending upon the complexities level two agents will pitch in and try to resolve them that's how it used to happen now what we have done is we are able to eliminate 25 member team who are doing this activity manually the level one team okay we were the first point of contacts who are trying to read through the content posted and trying to tag them right and this is not a keyword but search so it, it involves machine learning natural language processing techniques to build this solution and even the ua don't think it is built upon your uh, react js or angular js or html pages it has been developed by using a programming language called as r because i am not a, a great ui developer i have built this using the r language which i am going to teach you as part of the sessions and what i'm now going to do is i'm going to do, go to a wells fargo page to the twitter in real time and i'm going to fetch some certain tweets here because it, i'm using a public api so then there is a restriction i cannot download the all the data at once right i can at most it download 1080 so this is i just round it off to 1000 tweets so what i'm going to do select the page select the number of tweets in real time from this time to the last 350 tweets the latest 350 tweets should be retained and i'm going to say analyze tweets or observing on the right bottom side it is going to twitter in real time it is fetching the day tweets and it's trying to classify them in real time you see this wow in a click of a button historically there is a 25 member team who used to manually read and certify them understanding the english text understanding the mood understanding the intent understanding the polarity of the text they used to do this now we have eliminated the need of the 25 people who are doing the operations duty manually reading them into automated and intelligent automated don't think when i say automation is an rpa robotic process automation where i'm using a ui path or something else it is an intelligence automated backed by natural language processing techniques followed by the machine learning techniques so what you see is a click of a button all the tweets have been classified into respective buckets right now my level 2 agents duty has become very famous because my level 1 agents are no more required because i was able to automate their work now my level 2 agents will directly come here and they can see what are the issues that these customers are enjoying and if you see this is in real time friends you can see the date and time yeah. it has been crossed to nearly eastern time maybe or approximately yeah it's an eastern time you can see it's the latest information it's not like an predefined data that i am trying to put it as part of the application okay interesting yes. right and what you see is all the negative tweets so there is some abusing language too that's all we have to live with it right because if you're not able to service the customers then they use all the different languages apart from english too mm -hmm. see now you see it is neatly classified it means out of 300 tweets i am not even reading the good tweets because even if you try to acknowledge a positive tweet little late does it harm no no but if you try to acknowledge a negative tweet late what will happen it gets more negative very good it means it is going to result in a rehashing retweeting right reposting and yeah. the damage will start falling right because as you know if you are trying to handle one tweet in a wrong way it will create unnecessary nuisance and nonsense on the social media platforms ultimately your brand value yeah. will get impact to certain extent even if it's a temporary or short term but definitely there would be a negative impact on the organization so this is how efficiently we are trying to develop an intelligent automation backed by the natural language processing and machine learning techniques to do this duty in a click of a button and also the other beauty if you have observed is or not we are trying to attach a sentiment score to right what does yeah. it mean say if there are thousands of tweets even in the negative bucket how are you trying to prioritize the book of work right how does the prioritization happens historically it is always first come first service basis a person who has tweeted first will try to get the service first but that's not the way that we need to go the most negative tweet has to be serviced first agree yeah right so that's how we are trying to do this
it means so did you this, this COVID, through, yes and i said that we do a lot of freelancing stuff too so that's all right because as part of the earlier thing right we are able to onboard one of the student as part of my freelancing projects it all depends upon the knowledge we try to conduct a lot of interviews and if you're able to perform well definitely you'll be considered for the freelancing stuff too and okay. some of the other things these are some uh common reporting things but that's how you're just trying to do so this is what i'm interested to show how you're able to automate the manual process with a click of a button interesting good you able to follow sounds good. yeah sounds good how about others geetika kaita yes. tanbinu good any yes. questions here good. Yeah, done, no? yeah go ahead actually you have shown me the amazon go and the, this linkedin and the, the netflix example regarding the mm -hmm. recommendations mm -hmm. how is it related to data science actually why not see what is data science? as i said right as long as you are able to extract the knowledge or the intent from the historical data right it will be coming under data science but to be right recommendation so if you have seen the definitions right what did i say data science is a field which is dealing with exploration on data analysis on data experimentation on data using the different sciences and extract the knowledge the knowledge could be in the form of prediction classification forecasting or a recommendation also got the point so the knowledge cannot be always say that i have to always forecast only sometimes even segmentation means profiling the data or identifying the patterns on the data can also be a uh, outcome of a particular problem statement now you cannot always judge only when i try to predict only i will call it as a data science but as i said most of the times predictive mode is very closely associated with data science projects okay got the point anita yeah yes okay so moving to the next what for business right as i already told it is getting a lot of roi when i say roi it's not only the dollar amounts the efficiency the productivity the intelligent automation that you are trying to bring the customer experience time to market that is another important point previously also the work is to get done using burning lot of manual hours but it used to take lot of time sometimes time matters the moment you immediately serve a purpose then they are more happy Right, because of all these factors, business are investing heavily. How much investing uh, heavy? You will be surprised. Even HR teams are hiring data scientists. Do you know that? Because yeah. HR process is a more manual process. As soon as they get a job description, a requisition ID, a job description, roles and responsibilities. Now they take some keywords, go to this uh, respective portals. Right, what are the respective job portals that you have in your countries? They search through them and they try to shortlist. This is such a manual process, right? Now, what they're trying to do is they're trying to make an end-to-end -end intelligent automation. The moment you provide the job descriptions, roles, and responsibilities, it will go to LinkedIn. It will go to the respective job portals, and it's going to search through all the profiles which are being latest, and wherever it is matching to the most extent, right? They're trying to rank the profiles also. If you need only 20 profiles, it will say rank one to all the way to 20. So all the manual process of searching, comparing, tagging has been completely automated using the NLP and machine learning processes. And if I'm not wrong, there are n number of startups which have been working in this phase, where they are trying to integrate with all the portals and all the services, and it's just like a click away. And even it will try to schedule a meeting with the respective person, decide the calendar, right? Even there are a few. Uh, video analytics which are happening understanding the mood understanding how the person is answering them etc okay so this is like there is no end to it actually the moment you see a data or a problem statement there would be some application that you can develop the another interesting inspiring example is one of the person called as bamshi right he was from the uh, state of jharkhand in india so he was working in an agricultural department and he joined our course and after this now he is working with government of jharkhand agricultural department in trying to come up with some uh, agro based startup he's trying to suggest uh, saying that why don't we apply data sciences in agriculture sector too right estimating or predicting what could be the forecast or trying to select which particular crop should be sowed in a particular demand and supply basically they wanted to uh, reduce the gap between demand and supply and which particular crop should be grown in which particular area so there's no end of opportunities but the only thing is you need to be very passionate about this subject okay 
sounds good danish yeah hey danish uh, j just a quick time check um, so uh, how how far uh, how are we doing for the time yeah so 11. it would be another 10 minutes yeah it's another 10 minutes okay yeah because i it's it'll be nice if you can have like uh, five minutes uh, question and answer sort of thing so we can uh, clarify some yeah, of the so, things okay. As I always believe, right? so telling this what are skills that required would be a five minutes task for me, right? But providing a context is more important where I focus yes. more today. No, no, okay. no uh, please don't get me wrong, Lyle. I really enjoy no, what you're problem. doing. Um, I just want to make sure everything is going yes. on time. That's it. Yes. And coming to the skill set required, this is a crux, right? What should I learn to become a data scientist? So this is a simple Venn diagram for your better understanding. The journey starts with mathematics and statistics, right? Again, don't get scared. Where I'm not going to scare you with mathematical formulas, proofs, and etc. We are going to talk more about the same things. What happened? Why happened? Where happened? Similarly, the basic W and H will be taught as part of the mathematics and statistics, which is the basic fundamental for you to grow as a data scientist. Once that is done, we are going to learn machine learning. When I say machine learning, deep learning will also come as part of your machine learning itself. And also, we are going to talk about natural language processing. And then comes your hacking skills, the red area. I call it a hacking skills, but to keep it simple, it is a programming skills. Why? Because most of the times, all the algorithms are a single function call. It means you did not write hundreds and thousands of lines of code to solve a machine learning problem statement. Every statistical and machine learning algorithm is a single function with some set of arguments. But most of the times, if the data is very noisy, very messy, very crappy, then you need to hack the data. So the reason we are calling it hacking skills, but to keep it simple, these are nothing but your programming skills. Then comes your substantive expertise. This is where your analytical thinking, logical reasoning. Looking at a problem statement, you should be able to talk about the approach. You should be able to visualize what kind of a design that you need to provide. And this comes by solving more number of problems. So you cannot claim yourself as a logical or analytical person without solving some problems. So the reason the more you solve the problems from different domains, the more expertise you will be gaining and apart from this the traditional research right as i said you need to have a mindset of a data analyst too sometimes sometimes you need to think like a data miner right so all those concepts and things that traditionally be working on an analytical domain has to be there a person who is possessing mathematics statistics machine learning deep learning nlp exposure to open source languages solving more number of problem statements able to provide design approach right and in over and above the traditional research of data mining opportunities right he can become a data scientist and the danger zone is here here people claim themselves to be a logical analytical person without solving anything they learn r and python programming and they go for the interview so this is where people are falling mostly in the danger zone without spending quality time in understanding the algorithms the statistical behavior the statistical molding and mathematics are you clear now what are the skill set required to become a data scientist stats machine learning nlp deep learning r language python tensorflow right and doing a lot of real time projects right and also learning some of those traditional way of presenting the data okay which will help you in cracking all those data science problem statements are you clear on this yeah okay and i said opportunities even in this crisis situation go to your linkedin go to anywhere right there are still well good openings for data scientists because data science is not a burden on an organization better data science is a futuristic investment the moment you invest now the roi on those investments would be multiple folds and but again we are living in a digital way is right why can't i learn data science on your own very simple it is a subject friends had it been a programming language had it been a tool or framework you would have tried it and you would have been able to learn but data science is a subject a subject which is has to be structuredly learned that I learned by a real time master who would be able to address your questions, concerns, and concerns day to day basis. Right? So, the reason you cannot learn data science on your own. People might post some interesting posts on the LinkedIn, but how genuine are they? Right? It would be really hard for someone to learn something very independently, which is heavily based on your mathematics and statistics. Right? Until unless you are from the statistical background prior, you will not be able to understand those concepts that easily. And even if you understand how does this work on real time is more important right it's not a plug and play where you say a equal to b b equal to c then a equal to c will happen it's not that straightforward right there are a lot of challenges uh, that you need to solve and bias if you ask me how danush is different from the rest of the world passion nothing else i started my journey as an legacy developer 
where I was able to transform into the world of big data, then BI intelligence, then finally landed up on data science. Something that I have learned very passionately. And this is how I'm just trying to handle one batch at a time. So I'm not like a full time trainer because I have my own startup activities too. So this I'm trying to put my entire focus on a single batch at one at a time. So you might be thinking I'll be handling four to five batches. No, one batch at a time so that my students will get an entire exposure to my expertise and my uh, selfishness here is because I wanted to start my own consulting firm. So definitely if my students are well equipped, right? In 2020, I just wanted to try it on the freelancing platform where I would just wanted to bring in those uh, consultancies. If they have some work on data science thing, definitely they will be able to do this because of this COVID situation. I'm just trying to go with it or take that particular path because work from is a new normal. So definitely if I could be able to give or deliver something very good to the clients, definitely there will be more number of freelancing opportunities. And after also uh, three hours, it would take around three and a half months to complete this uh, program. And after this also, we are going to help you on tips and tricks. How do you pro project yourself as a data scientist, right? How can you cover up your prior expertise in data science? That is very important because at least you are working in India. If you say that I'm a newbie, definitely they will not even consider for interviews. Right, because at least the uh, scenario would change as part of US and Canada. Because if you are genuine enough, say that hey, I have the expertise, but didn't get an opportunity to work on it, they'll still entertain you in some of the organizations. Right. So the, based upon where you are working and what you are uh, interested upon, we'll be able to help you in preparing the CVs. Right. And at least if you are passionate enough, we are going to guide you to do one POC in your current organization itself. So if you have a, a good uh, connect with respect to the higher management, definitely we will help you towards the middle of the program. We'll have a one on one session where I will be talking with you to pick one use case as part of your current organization and deliver it by the end of the program. So by you can experience the data science real time project by yourself apart from 20 plus project that I'm going to help you with. Okay, we are going to solve nearly 20 real time projects as part of the three months, three and a half months journey. Don't think it's only theory only. If I try to teach one algorithm today, immediately the next day, we are going to see a real time implementation of that. Okay, and also I will uh, conduct a lot of mock up interviews. Say that if you are the moment you have decided to go for a job hunt, so I, I'll be the first uh, one who would be taking the mock up interview for you so that I will be able to provide uh, how did you perform and share my feedback too. Okay, and even after completion of the program, I do conduct some of the free workshops because data science is an ocean. No one can boil this ocean within a stipulated amount of time. There's a lot of things that you need to learn. Uh, keep a tab on the new algorithms, techniques that are happening in the industry. So this I will conduct ad hoc sessions once in a while just to stay connected with my students to help you to get placed into the data science roles if you are interested in that way. Okay, so the only expectation from me is focus and commitment for three and a half months. Be interactive right? because the subject until unless you ask some questions, you will not be able to get this content observed. Okay, and give me two more minutes. Uh, I'll be sure. just sharing on a very high level the course content. Then we can go around the table to get you. So as I said, this is a seven module course. We are going to teach statistics, machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing, R language, Python language and TensorFlow. So three programming frameworks and five modules pretty much which are all required to become a data scientist and I'm going to share all this content but on a very high level I'm just trying to show what are the statistical sure. concepts that will be covered the so statistics has two branches descriptive statistics and inferential statistics and I'm not going to teach MSc statistics or thesis writing I'm going to talk about real-time implementation of the statistical subjects so this I label it as business statistics because I'm going to explain only those concepts which are still relevant which are applicable as part of your real-time jobs okay and as part of your artificial intelligence, there are four modules. The first module is called supervised machine learning, where you, I will be training you on 15 machine learning algorithms followed by 10 plus real time projects. Right from regression analysis to tree based classification, some of those advanced models, neural networks, support vector machines. And if you wanted to win hackathon competitions, right? Hiring hackathon competitions, then these are some of those important models, which will give you the better accuracy within a less amount of time random forest gradient boosting. Then we go to artificial intelligence module two unsupervised machine learning where I'm going to teach four more algorithms 15 again four here followed by two use cases. Then we are going to explain a lot of model validation techniques, right? And I'm going to talk about natural language processing also. So if the data is in text information documents PDFs, how are you going to extract insights from them? 
right so this particular field of human language interaction with computers is called as natural language processing we are going to do two to three projects here including the one that i have shown you and if the data is in images what if there is an image you wanted to classify them right so you cannot do this by using simple python language you need to have a deep learning framework which is we call as tensorflow which google has open sourced in 2015 and which is the default or most commonly used deep learning framework is tensorflow we are going to teach you tensorflow and also we are going to learn some of those important architectures of deep learning which is called rn and cnns and over and above i said right from installation of your software talking about the data types with respect to programming language would be handled r language python and tensorflow we will start with r once we master r then we start try to teach you on python the same way okay and once this is completed we are going to expose you to the deep learning framework called as tensorflow so this is pretty much that i would like to cover it's an open forum let's go around the table chandra can you start with you any questions concerns issues yeah a couple of questions hey eh? one is um, so expectations from us you're not expecting us to be in any part like anybody can do this that's what you're saying yes as long as we are ready to put our work into it very good right as i said there are no prerequisites as such right let me tell you another example if it it will kill yeah. one minute of time but it's okay so there was sure, a person sure. called vamshi right this is a second vamshi right he was working as a medical coder you know right medical coder yeah, is yeah, not yeah. it job and yeah. now after pursuing our program it took a lot of time for him but after 8 months right he was able to now start working as a junior data scientist in novartis nice. it means if you have the passion and interest for the subject right it might get yeah. little delayed but it will definitely will happen but if you're just trying to come to join a program for the sake of salary hike it might be little difficult because you are output driven right first yeah. you have to be input driven right how passion for the subject the success will follow you that's what i always say no statistical Sounds. no programming or any degree is mandatory for here as long as you have right. passion for the field all right sounds good and uh, all the like uh, you already mentioned you will do the software and everything that's needed you will yes. help us uh, do all it is an i3 windows system with 4 gb ram okay, okay. That's, and that's you might be getting a question right how, how would be i will be able to train on images which will require a lot of computation power I have a alternates to right we have like an free yeah. cloud platform that i'm going to provide to you where you can be okay. able to get a good gpu power for free of cost so don't worry yeah. about that okay okay i understand okay so you'll be guiding us all those things and how long uh, what are the timings that you have for the class it would be uh, one hour each day maybe okay. five to six days a week so it all depends upon how because it's a five days per mandatory if the okay. course or the pace of the program is very slow because of question and answers and etc yeah i might yeah. take a class on the weekend or else it okay. will be monday okay. to friday daily one hour in the morning 6 am to 7 am ist so try to relate it to your cst or est or pst yeah yeah that's that's okay okay, okay. 6 am to 7 am am ist okay. okay that's perfect and uh, the next thing is the fee so you can What say I'm, i'm a technological driver here so uh, the, the, your respective admins would be the right person to talk on those okay oh, okay okay, okay. so whoever is okay that's yeah. that's pretty good all right man that's all the questions i have and uh, i really like um, the way you are explaining and everything i know that uh, we're going to have a good time yeah. and uh, Thanks, i do Kendra, believe yeah i do believe that this is the one of the hottest technologies that you need to get into so cool thanks thanks danish yeah, you never know you might become a startup lead by yourself it's all about identifying the right opportunity and implementing yeah. it quickly Yeah, I know. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Geetika, do you have any questions, concerns? Definitely, Geetika. So you can get see, come getting the certifications, internship certificates. I can help you on every front because I said I have a registered organization, right? I can provide all those over and above what Harsha is trying to provide. Okay, it's up to you, right? So we can figure it out. That should not be a great concern. If you need any experience certificates or internship certificates explaining what you have done as part of this, right? I can make it because uh, in US, right? One of the friends have asked me like, uh, "Sir, can you provide me nine months internship certificate?" Right? No, so no. What you have think, done is, uh, uh, Danush, I think she means like, uh, is there any particular certification that we should do, like for PEGA? Actually, we have so, CSA like that. Very good, right? So I'm trying to come because I see like most of the people here from PEGA. In oh. PEGA is one software owned by one company, isn't it? Yeah. 
yeah yeah it's so over. Then you can get it but whereas data science is a subject now no one can claim this subject saying that i own the data science subject so the yeah. reason respective individual institutes or the brands can issue their own certificates so they are saying having a brand name for ourselves we are good enough to give you the internship uh, maybe the course completion certificate or maybe the excellence okay. certificate all right so Sounds that's good. all in our hands because it's not a product or it's not a tool right it's a yeah. subject so no one can claim a subject yeah. so the reason every organization is coming up with their own certificate similarly we are uh, authorized to use our certifications to issue Sounds does it answer the question geetika industries are respective all right even though i have shown some of the real world examples of netflix and everything all the industries right telecom your insurance pharma life sciences banking financial services you name any organization everyone has a data the moment they have the data there is applicability of data sciences because of the shortage of span i didn't talk about some of the things but even the government organizations or entities are opening their data science teams i don't know if you are from uh, south india india if you are from india right uh, uh, south india then andhra pradesh government telangana government has had data scientists right andhra pradesh government has formed a 30 members data science team 2018 right under the name called e pragati there are 30 data scientists who work for government organizations too okay so, so salary expectations it all depends geetika see it all depends upon your performance because data science is the hottest job getting the right candidate is very very difficult if you are able to convince or do a 100 by 100 as per your technical panel discussions then it's like a blank check but if you are like an half big where you are you are good but not excellent then definitely that salary negotiations will all depend on your performance the technical i have given an example where a person got 11 folds in indian inr because he was getting 2.5 lakhs package as a qa analyst in a service based organization he got placed in goldman sachs with 22.5 okay okay job role names it's all depends upon your expertise so there are junior data scientist data scientist senior data scientist lead data scientist principal data scientist chief data scientist so this hierarchy will change as per of the organizations this there's no standard format just like your uh, uh, software programming right you go to fang companies they say sde 1 2 3 when you go to some other other organization they call as senior software engineer lead etc so the hierarchical structure is pretty uh, customized as per of organization but depending upon your expertise we'll try to tell you which particular position should you aim for okay geetika yeah thanks moving on to the next anita Do you need any specifications for the laptop? No, as I said that uh, Windows. Uh, when I say Windows, it could be Mac or it could be anything. But I'm just saying that any standard OS with i3, 4 GB RAM should be the minimum. And even if you don't have it, have some alternate ways to help you on that. But those are simple. Why should you always go to cloud to do something, right? Having something on laptop it would be the easiest ones. Yes. Right? For the bigger computation power, have a alternate ways where you can get free. gp of 16 gb cpu and nearly 4 gb gpu power for free of cost as per the program go to explain that but for now having a laptop with good microphone where you can interact with me with a i3 4 gb ram should be good enough for initial okay anything on the content demo side that you would like to see or something actually we are having a project on artificial intelligence which is going to be started next year in our organization wow. then you are in a right place and right moment right because it takes 3 and a half months for you to become an expert and soon you can start contributing toward the project right maybe you might take a lead and start doing some pocs if yes, you get back to the data here actually wow so then definitely make clinical research completely okay. after completing my mbm sc i have worked in a publishing house and now mm-hmm. i'm working as a team lead we all mm-hmm. deal with only the clinical trials and the data which comes from the clinical trials only which we will be getting from the abroad yeah so i'm completely into that and suddenly we thought of that we'll start some artificial intelligence project in this and so they were asking for only some expertise in data science so i'm yeah. completely zero knowledge about data science and all the technological platforms and everything i even don't know what sodacal what is python something only the names which i hear So I don't know definitely, Anita. No, no. So, see, we are going to treat anyone as a newbie. 
we are not saying that you need to have an expertise or experience on a particular uh, subject or a uh, programming language so we are trying to treat every student as a beginner who does not have any knowledge so that's where the journey starts okay so you'll be handholded all through the journey and moreover how far this data science will be good in future actually and now though it is yeah. a six years job yes it's like hot cake data scientist sir. but how and is as you said right very good so what i would say like see as long as you are able to keep a tab on the new happenings see as an example right in with respect to anything if there is an uh, there should be a constant up learning of yourself say as an example now you're becoming a data scientist right now after this right you need to choose a particular path whether you wanted to build a self-driving cars or whether you wanted to uh, work with respect to a uh, uh, humanoid robots or maybe you wanted to develop a deep reinforcement line there are a lot of verticals again it means this field is an ai artificial intelligence is like an hardest nut to crack right so as long as you're able to upskill your techniques time to time right will be relevant but if you think that i become a data scientist now i wanted to take a leisure time say that i don't learn anything for next two years what will happen there will be more number of people in front of you isn't it so there's an upskilling is has to be a new mantra irrespective of which particular position you are in okay. it means the job would be there but the kind of growth that you are expecting might not be there okay yes. so there is an aspect of my study. see i'm conducting these workshops not to sell my future courses I'm going to keep this ad hoc sessions after the completion program to see like, hey, what's happening around? How should you better equip yourself for the future trends? Right? Because I'm a person who has started quantum computing when no one is even talking about that in Hyderabad. So that's how I just try to guide my people saying that how you should be talking something new, which is not happening because the quantum computing will hit the industry in 2022. Right. But I prepared for uh, that by now itself. So that's how I'm going to keep you based upon your interest and passion. I'm going to guide you all through the way. Don't think that our association will end after three months. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good to hear from you. Actually. Okay. Any, anything else, Anita? Hope you are able to uh, get a, a, a good knowledge from this demo session. Yeah. Yes. Done. Okay. Thanks, Anita. Interesting to and thank you so much. Thanks, Anita, for the feedback. Moving to the last, Tanvinur. Hey, uh, so are we going to start from tomorrow with the same link? Uh, no, Tanvinur. So how it happens, right? Because see, this is, uh, we just started because I said that I took a gap of one and a half month to accelerate my startup activities. Now, mm -hmm. it may take a week or so uh, because once you enroll, right, all the subsequent information will be provided to you. The actual day, start date and what is the timing and uh, the course fee, etc. You can talk to the respective uh, admin that you got this call from and he'll be able to guide you on that. But only when you subscribe, they they are going to provide all those required information. I think I don't know the terms okay. and conditions. But you can check with them uh, the start date. But it would be near soon. It would be not like uh, a very two months away from now. But we are just trying to see a decent count and start there. Okay. Sure. Thanks. So we don't Anything need to connect. So no, we don't need to connect to Mars Danish. All right. Yeah. It's a okay. it's a Monday demo. Uh, so because it, it is just to provide you the right direction right because we are going to handle okay. everything from the day one of our program all right hopefully you'll start soon danish yes yes definitely right because even i don't want to keep my students waiting okay but uh, you have to uh, reserve your seat and only then uh, the respective things will fall in place immediately yeah. like i said i'm in men uh, we can start as soon as possible definitely so see you might have a lot of confusion friends so let me make this last point right there will be a lot of fears right uh, whether i will be able to learn stats maths right there are n number of inspiration examples that happened in my program right so come with love come with passion come with interest the rest of the things will fall in place right so all don't have any fear saying that whether i am capable enough to learn that such a hard subject nothing is hard right i'm going to make this subject very interesting very interactive and very excited right so the, because I the simple your success is my success. Why? If you have been able to become knowledgeable, my consulting plans will accelerate more easily because who can I trust more than my students, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so, then, so my interest would be to make you knowledgeable and let's attain the knowledge in this particular program. Yeah, no, I, I just want to say one thing, Danish. I mean, I've been in uh, IT for almost 20 years now and uh, 
for anyone that's all, even remotely thinking this is really good thing like you guys are actually trying to do this much earlier than what i'm planning to do and i feel this is really something that will help you so yeah. if you have a chance try it yeah because uh, yeah so because i have we have launched ourselves because it's very see because we don't have any physical office still we are able to onboard three clients right as i said one uk client and two us clients now we are going to the germany too right because we have like four people who are working for us uh, developing the uh, projects and etc and we are very excited about the journey because in this artificial intelligence scenario the more you solve more problems the more confidence you will have so that's an other way it's not about only the income generation it's all about uh, putting your passion and trying to uh, get a good roadmap you can because of this work from home scenario it has become our life very easy we need not even convince anyone because they're saving two hours on the computation from the india side and they're more than happy to lend their free time uh, in doing something else okay then so if you don't have any questions i will call it a day and talk to your respective admins uh, enroll for the program and the communication date of start date and everything will fall in place okay thanks friends right, thanks Tanish. Uh, have a good night have a man. great day have a great weekend bye guys talk to you soon bye yeah bye, bye.